This video will focus on motion diagrams and in particular how we're going to be creating velocity and acceleration vectors with those. There will be later videos that focus on velocity and acceleration that will also show some of this, but motion diagrams are really one of the starting points for the class. The SLOs that are most relevant uh, for this topic are the idea of creating representations. In particular, motion diagrams are a great way of representing motion and simplifying it down into something that we can then mathematically represent with equations. This is also about communication, in particular with vectors. That when we're drawing vectors to represent things, and right now most of our work with vectors will be done graphically rather than mathematically, it's really important that the vector you draw communicates what you intend it to. So when we think about motion diagrams, the best way to think about this is that it's like taking multiple frames of a video and superimposing them or just laying them on top of one another. So for instance, as we have a car that's driving from the left to the right, you could imagine a frame of a video taken every fraction of a second later that shows the car moving closer to the right side of the screen. Something that's important to remember is that we could actually have more frames of the videos in between here that would show it having traversed a smaller distance. So we assume that when you see something like this, just like a movie flipping by on the screen or perhaps an animated uh, GIF online, that there was actually a smooth motion from this first position to this second position. That the car didn't just start here, magically teleport here, teleport there, and so on. That we're seeing a few points that are representative of smooth motion. What we are then doing for a motion diagram is instead of showing four separate pictures, we're just actually laying them on top of one another. So in this case, it's coming over here, uh, the next one here, and so on. So in this case, you can see that our one box that we had before is now showing all four positions of the car, and that you can see that it's still moving slow, uh, smoothly from left to right. One of the things that's important about this is that we have the same time interval between each one. We're going to talk about this time interval as delta t. So that's what gets us from the first position to the second position. So again, keep in mind that it's smooth motion, that we're not showing you every single point, and that the time interval on each one, say delta t1 and then delta t2, delta t3, that these should all be equal to one another. So now I'm going to talk you through how we can go from one of these representations to actually talking about some physics quantities. So the first thing to realize is that what we can clearly see from one position to another is called displacement. So if we just look at, in this case, the person on the skateboard, we see that in each situation the person on the skateboard has moved. And we would call this distance a displacement. We have a first displacement, we have a second displacement, and so on. If this notation is unclear to you, make sure that you go back and look at the notation video and or the vector video where I talk a little bit about this. So the next thing that we can do is actually create a velocity vector. Now, the thing to remember for velocity is that in this case, we're really just starting with the idea of average velocity. And so I'm going to write this as v sub avg, meaning average velocity. And this is going to be equal to the displacement over whatever interval I'm looking at, divided by the time of that interval. Now this is again average velocity. Later videos will talk a little bit about how we can talk about velocity more accurately and the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Now what's nice about this is remember that our delta t is always going to be the same between every frame. So we're not actually calculating numbers here, but we know that delta t is the same. So if I wanted to create a velocity vector, in this case I can just make it the same length as delta r. And in this case my displacement really did have different units than my velocity vector, but I'm not worrying about uh, units right now. So I have my first veloc average velocity, my second average velocity, 
and my third average velocity. Now in this first case, you see that your displacement vectors are all the same size, so your velocity vectors are all the same size. This is what we call uniform motion and will be talked about in a little more detail in a later video. So we can now look at the second situation, which is of a person running. Now in this case, again, we want to try to draw these displacement vectors. And we're going to see that in this case, it looks like they're not all the same size. It looks like it's getting bigger and bigger, and we would call this a change in velocity and therefore an acceleration. So as we see, for the same interval in time, the displacement vector is getting bigger, therefore the velocity vector should be getting bigger too. So we can see that here just by how I've drawn it. And in this situation, we would have acceleration. It's therefore not uniform motion. And how we actually think about this in terms of equations and modeling the physics of it is going to be covered in more detail in a later video. Now, the last situation is this car. Now, one thing that's been true about all of these is that I've assumed it's motion to the right. Now, perhaps this person was sliding backwards on a skateboard. That would have shown you opposite displacements and opposite velocities it probably would have been much harder for this person to be running like this backwards, and perhaps the car is accelerating backwards, but instead we'll assume that the car is driving forwards. So for the sake of the car, we actually see that our displacement vector is getting smaller and smaller, so our corresponding velocity vector is decreasing in size. We would again say that this is not uniform motion, that there is an acceleration here. One thing to note in physics is that we call all changes in velocity an acceleration. In just normal English, we might say that this car is decelerating because it's slowing down. But in physics, we would call that an acceleration, not necessarily a deceleration. So be careful about that. But you can see that in all cases, we can just take the distance of the uh, displacement vector and translate that directly into the length of the velocity vector. And the reason we can do that is because the time interval between each picture in our motion diagram is the same.